All right, I am sowing more beet seeds inside. As I told you when I was transplanting things out, three root Grex beet. I think this is just a blend, gold, orange, and red from Redwood Seeds. And I was telling you my germination rate wasn't wonderful, but I did transplant them. They are doing well, but I want to have a succession planting of them. So I'm starting inside because I'm starting inside because I have such an issue with birds and stuff eating direct sowed beets. I have like no luck with them that way. So I'm doing a bunch of bunch right now. My Japanese maple is starting to get some leaves on it. Don't know if it's gonna focus for you. Oh goodness. And here is one of my um, chamomile, a calendula, and this beautiful variegated lemon thyme. Isn't that beautiful? This bed, we had to put a little booby trap thing up because my chickens keep digging up dahlias and ginger that I'll plant in here. So I'm gonna try to do this bed a little better this year and hopefully that keeps them out, I hope. The chickens know they're getting some sort of treat. And so they are, whoops, the chickens know they're getting a treat. Oh no, but they think I'm giving them a treat too and I'm not. Ah! <laughs> oh goodness, getting in the garden sometimes is a little crazy. <laughs> All right. I am gonna plant a few peas that were growing in some of my soil that I think would be great here. Since the last peas I had, a chicken got in here and ate. Some of them look a little frozen. Boy, I hope we can get something out of this. This has not been the best year for peas, for sure. Not the best at all. This one and this one, maybe. All right. Welcome to Schofield Farm. I've got to harvest some lettuce for dinner. We're having a salad with our meal. Oh, and I have some of these that are actually pretty close to bolting that I'm going to cut out completely. Like this one, not quite bolting yet, but it has a center that kind of wants to. And then some of the other ones, I might just pick outside leaves quickly. The radishes that I planted right here coming up. That is good news. Oh, rainy day garden. The beets that I transplanted are just chugging right along there. And cabbage are sorta working on heads, sorta, <laughs> sorta. And cauliflower is just chugging right along. It's very pretty in the rain. I'm cold. It's very cold right now, but things are very pretty. 
a little bit more broccoli. I'm not gonna pick it today. Just out here for a salad today. That's all I'm focusing on. But I do like seeing things like broccoli going and kale. I might pick a couple leaves of kale for the salad. I think that's my best broccoli so far and it's really not that huge, but it's beautiful. I'm gonna pick some kale just a little bit here and there. Picking some outer leaves so that it keeps growing from the center. Oops, that one had a branch by it. My onions that have been so stunted actually finally look kind of like onions right there. See that? That's one of them. This is very pretty. I believe this is the Red Russian and that's one of my favorite varieties. It's so pretty. I just love the color of it in the garden. Seriously, these sites don't get old. It was worth coming out here in the break in the rain. This specific chard has been in my garden for a couple years. Isn't it beautiful? It just keeps coming back. I just pinch off any bolting and it just makes this like bushy bush. Once we have sunlight, it's going to be crazy huge. But I'm gonna get some of that for the salad too. I'm just going to grab some of the outer leaves. Just get a bunch of these lower ones. Just kind of by the handful. Whoopsie. Oh, look at that root. Seriously? I thought about roasting it like a beet sometimes because you know they are related, right? Has anyone else roasted charred root? I'm very curious if it tastes anything like beets. And here is some flowering mustard. I actually think I'm still gonna harvest some of the lower leaves. They might be kind of bitter, but I want them in my salad. Oh goodness. I'm glad I have some more started inside because Who's ever heard of mustard bolting in like 50 degrees? What a crazy year of weather we've had. My red cabbage has no head yet, but that's okay. Hopefully once we warm up, we'll start to get ahead. We have some salad stuff. Oh, now I gotta get past these chickens that think I have food for them and I don't. This food is for us and they think it's for them. All right, so I harvested some salad in the garden. I am in here moving some more of my flower seeds or flower seedlings up into cups. And I wanted to talk a little bit about weather. Oh my goodness, 
as a gardener, weather is something that is can be awesome or can be such a frustration. And it makes me actually think of the serenity prayer. I'm trying to remember exactly it goes like, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, to the ability to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. And I'm pretty sure that's generally what it is. And I feel like the weather falls into this for a gardener. There is so much that is completely out of our control with weather. We here are in zone 9B and usually this is the end of March and usually I think the average high for here in March is like 66 to 70, which means we have as many days above that as we do below that, right? Like it averages and it has been rainy. We have had like multiple snows. I mean, we don't even get a snow that sticks every year. I think we've had five snow stick. Um, a six day where it was snowing, it didn't stick. That was yesterday. We are technically past our last frost date. That means nothing. That means nothing when I look at the 10 day forecast. So I have absolutely no control of the weather. And that is just fact. Like it doesn't matter that we're zone 9B. It doesn't matter that we live in an area that is past our last frost date. I don't usually even plant out till mid April like the summery kind of stuff. And all of our cold weather crops are already out there, except for um, some of the more cold weather crop type flowers. And I have some lettuce that I had started up there on the shelf that's not ready yet. But um, like summery stuff, I wasn't gonna plant out anyway. But we're almost in April and we are so cold. And I think that in some ways is frustrating as it is to me. That's one of the beauties of gardening is we learn how little we really control life. I can plant, I can start seeds, I can do the things that are in my control, but I really learn that there's so much of life that is beyond me, that's bigger than me, that you know I have to release into God's hands. I have to release that if we have a sudden heat wave, for the summer and we never had a spring, but that's gonna be okay. And there's nothing you can do about it anyway. Even if I don't choose to accept it, I can't literally do anything about it. So it's better to accept those things, right? Since they're completely out of our control. That's something I'm learning and I just realized I did not put these <laughs> labels in the new tomatoes that I just put in cups. So I'm gonna have to do that real quick. That is in my control and I could be very confused at which tomatoes they are if I don't get those labels in there. Anyway, what is in my control right now? Well, I went and harvested some salad. I started more beets inside so that I can succession plant them out. Beets do better for me inside. I have a lot of pest pressure with them out in the garden if I direct sow. What else is in my control? I can bottom water my tomatoes that need to be watered. I can't really take them outside to get nice um, sun and filtered light because it is so cloudy and cold, but I can bottom water them. I can size up these flowers into cups. There is a lot that I can do and I always have a choice. Can I focus on what I can't do and what I can't control? Can I focus on what I can do and what I can control. And that's something that I have to make daily decisions. I have to decide, I'm not gonna have a pity party about the weather. I'm gonna do the next thing in front of me that I actually can do. And I have plenty of little flowers that I can move up into cups. It's not like I don't have a lot to keep me busy with seven kids and homeschooling and having bees and having chickens and having all these flowers I started and all the things on our plate, I have plenty to keep me busy. I don't have to worry about the things that I literally can do nothing about. And anyway, I wanted to share that because I know there's other people in other zones that always have these long winters and you get to watch everyone else online planting their stuff out and wonder when your spring is coming, when your nice weather's coming. And I wanna encourage you, I feel like I have a little more compassion this year 
because we are having what I call a never ending winter. It's all right, completely out of my control. You know, one thing that I do do though, I love to pray for my garden to be fruitful. Have you ever prayed for your garden? I pray that our garden would bear much fruit, that it would be a blessing to our family and that we could be a blessing to other people. And that's something that I pray regularly over my starts. Um, some of them are bought locally. I pray they bless the people and be very fruitful for them. The things that we grow, I do sell um, a few fruits and veggies locally. And I also love to um, gift them when we can. And I pray that that would be a blessing. And obviously that it would also bless our family. But I want our garden to be a blessing beyond our family. And I think that's always a good thing to have vision for is that we could overflow into other people's lives and that we could really use the things that we put our hands to, to help others and to inspire them and to be generous and giving. And yeah, that's really a hope of mine. But I'm gonna get back to doing this. I enjoyed talking to you. I enjoyed sharing my garden with you. Oh my goodness, there's a little bit of light outside. I should have gone out now instead of earlier. But I'm going to get back to work on bottom watering, on sizing these up. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining me. If you enjoy our content, I'd love if you would subscribe or share our channel with a friend because we're here to encourage people to hopefully bless you and be a resource for you as you work on growing and raising your own food. And um, just, yeah, have a great day.